Wow. Been a while since we heard that noise on this yeah. podcast. Been a while since we cracked, but itchy, that was itchy. that was good <laughs> since we cracked. Good build up play, if you will, for all our soccer fans. That was uh, in unison. <laughs> Jalen, you uh, you went all reliable. Tell me what you're drinking tonight. White Claw, oh. Black Cherry. White Claw, Black Cherry. <laughs> on the double. On the double. That's the only mm. thing I drink. Oh, they're warm. He's du- oh, <laughs> Jay. I don't like my alcohol that cold, unless it's beer. Seltzers, I can drink. Mm. Whatever. Beer has to be cold. Well, we're Mighty back, back on the wagon. tab up here, bro. Oh, the, oh, the flat, the square oh, top tab. Yeah. Sad, sad. Shut, shut up. The German it, it, beer tab. You're drinking a, a fall beer, too, technically, Connor, which yes. I'm all about. For me, it's nine one or later, but but you you do you. Yeah, you know Oktoberfest. This is a fest beer. Mm, fest beer. German lager. <laughs> Yo, you should uh, read the entire back. Like, you want me to? no, it's no, it's no, in no, cursive. No, it might no, be kind of That's a throwback, Jalen. <laughs> Derek oh Ray God. would lo- would have a great pronunciation of that. That guy's German pronunciation is on. Um, it is. It is really good. It's it's insane. It's like uh, Müller. <laughs> no, Thomas Müller. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he goes Axel Witzel. <laughs> I don't even know if Axel Witzel is still there, but that was that was always a fun one. To He's hear. also Belgian. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. He's at Atletico. Good for him. What good, are you drinking? Good move. Did you name it? My bad, I yeah, interrupted. Bro, the fest beer. Okay. Fest oh. beer from where? Fest beer. Marty Squirrel. Shout what out is Marty. that? What is that accent? I have no idea how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Beer, da, das ist ein fest beer. <laughs> That's and like, that's proper German. Like that means that like is Swedish. a fast beer. It's like almost Swedish. Do you guys want the description? German. I can still give it to you. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Spare no. us, please. Stop. Uh, Tristan, you can go next. Um, this is a beer from Resurgence Brewing out of Buffalo, New York. This is Co- the Legend of Conehead. Legend of the Co- Buffalo Style IPA with Mosaic Hops. So this Conehead is a legend in, in Western New York. He, uh, It's many people. It's like Shamu or like the Blue Man Group. How It's, it's a bunch of different people, but they all have oh, one yeah, identity. Yeah. Um. He is the like the beer guy. So he goes around. He says, the Conehead guarantee. If you get a warm beer from me, you drink it for free. And so his beer is always like ice cold. But he serves like kind of like dog shit, like Coors Light and things like that. Oh, okay, but, yeah. Um, Legend of the Cones. So he's he is a legend. But there's there's many of them. But it's it's sort of a staple at Western New York to have this guy just carrying around a box of beer, yelling, hollering. Give him, uh, Halloween. Is it some random beer. guys or you have to be a part of the crew? Like, could no, you no, put it's the like, cone on? No, no, no. I couldn't just like oh, rock yeah. up with like a case of beer and a mustache and a big cone head. Like it's, they're definitely on team payroll, but uh, he's yeah. been doing it for a long time. And the wad of cash I see in that guy's pocket every night, not to like blow up his spot, but because he's well known, they tip him well. Yeah. Dude probably walks out of there with $500 in ones every single night, but uh, shout out to Resurgence and shout out to Conehead. See how it is actually. Oh, yeah, she her sip. Mmm. Tasty. Not bad. And it's ice cold, the Conehead way. Match week, does that everybody know? You got to go, Andrew. Tell yeah, me about my, it. My beer, I mean, I have no backstory to mine. Cool this, can. This is called Light Runner. It's a hazy IPA from Medusa Brewing Company. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's tasty. I mean, I've been off the IPA wave kind of heavily recently, but yeah. I always like to go back and dip my uh, dip my toes in. You know? Dip your toes back in don't the mosaic your toes hops. in your beer, man. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. Or in the hops they use to brew the beer, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just soaked his toes. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, it's, good. It's, like, it's like putting your feet in sand. Oh, shit. We <laughs> caught that boy again, and he was dipping his feet in the uh, mosaic hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Match week three was an absolute riot. Top to bottom, I think every single game was it just felt electrifying in its own way. We start, oh, we start with points before we get into anything. Uh, tough week for me personally. I only had four. Now, I got off to a rough start picking Luton over Chelsea. That one bit me in the ass. <laughs> I thought my Nottingham shout over United would, would come good, but man, uh, Bruno ruined that for me, so no yeah. points there either. Um, I, w- I was the lowest with four. Uh, Andrew, you had five. Jesus. Connor, you had eight. Jalen, you had ten. Um, Connor, Get in. And, Connor and Jalen each with one perfect pick apiece. Andrew and I with uh, with the goose egg. So if we look at the season standings, this is three match weeks in. Jalen is in the lead with 27. Connor, you have 26. I have 24. Andrew, you have 22. Ooh. So wow, I'm last. <laughs> hey, 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 it's early, right? It's it early. Is, it's so yeah. early in the season. It's so early so, in the yeah. season. Yeah, you can't tell anything right now. It's way Point too off. early. Where are you again? I uh, I am 24. I'm a third. I'm 24. Okay. So if you were first, I would have been like no, off. no, no. Because like Tottenham are doing well, right? I'm on my high horse, but August and September is always big for Tottenham fans. This is when we win the league. This is when we lift our our imaginary trophies. But uh, yeah, so tough week for points. But we will keep everybody posted on that. A lot. It's going to be a lot of shifting up and down. Especially, it's, it seems like it'll be pretty close. But uh, building Lee will be important. 
the last game of the weekend, I think, was the best game of the weekend for uh, from popcorn wise, box office wise. Liverpool comes storming behind down a man after a Van Dyke red card to beat <laughs> Newcastle two to one. Pretty insane performance by Nunez. That might have been one of the best substitution appearances in the history of the game. You'd have to think, right? Yeah. Shit talking. Klopp said it himself. He's managed over a thousand matches, and that match had to be look something if, he's never seen. Before. If baller of the weekend didn't have to be a baller, I'd have given that to Klopp this weekend. Because hey, I'm no fan of Klopp's. I've made that very clear in the podcast. But Klops. the the substitutioning on his part and the game management was really it was really top class. It was indicative of a guy who's been around for a while. But what was your immediate reaction besides holy shit? Yeah, I was running around, screaming pretty, going berserk. I got to watch it with uh, the head coach, LaSalle. He's also a Liverpool fan. Ooh. So that was an exciting watch. Jared is? Yeah, he is. They're playing uh, he's gone Massachusetts. Man. He's Liverpool yeah, fans. Yeah, for real. Oh, They're in, yeah, here we go. Influencing the kids. Um, but the Utes. I, honestly, the match itself was kind of, I will say it was a dull match. Like, it wasn't the best watch up until the 80th minute because – they came out with 11 men. We look very disorganized. We're like, what the hell is going on? I was, we didn't settle into the match. Newcastle also didn't settle in a match. So it wasn't good football out of the gate. And then as Van Dyke got sent off, we had a little resurgence surprisingly. And then after that Klopp made some attacking changes, but I was just like, it, it was horrible. I dozed off in like the 50th minute or something like that. And then Obviously, Nunez came on, and it was spectacular, and I'm really happy because I think he's a player that needs to get some more playing time. He had a phenomenal preseason, and he scored a lot of goals, so it's big for his confidence as a player. Those are chances that we saw him miss a lot of times, drag wide, drag left. And he's been frustrated as of goal. late because yeah. his playing time has dropped, and that's been a, that a noted thing. So, um, But I think this makes a statement. I think Klopp is a manager that will reward a player for doing something like that, and it won't just be in the next game. It'll be for many games to, club, to come, and we need him as a stretch striker, I think. Mm -hmm. It was Gary Neville actually said, of all the strikers we have, like Nunez would be the one that he fears the most just because of like his blistering pace, how he's – Fearless, yeah, I would agree Fearlessly with that. presses. Like, Gakpo is good. Jota is good. Like, Jota did have a really big impact on the game, but Nunez is just going to always chase a ball in behind. He's never going to make it easy for the center backs. Like, he's going to do everything in his power to compete, and I want to see that. Like, I want to see the energy. We need the energy. Gakpo looks a little uncomfortable playing as a false nine. It's not quite, obviously, on Bobby's levels, and Jota is just a matter of how many minutes he can string together. So, I guess that's my synopsis of the match, but what, what, was your, what a performance. What was your brief uh, impression on Endo? I think he was honestly really good. He's he's tidy on the ball, um, really likes going into challenges, obviously. That's why he wears his mouth guard. Right. Um, but <clears throat> always checking his shoulders, which is impressive. He was in some really tight spaces, and I don't think he turned the ball over much. He did get caught out once where he overcommitted, stepped high, and Gimaresh went on the break and it resulted in a chance. But just a really smart player. I don't think he's going to make too many mistakes. And if he if he holds possession and has a 90% pass completion, like that's all we need him to do. He didn't but try and do winner. too much for exactly. sure. Which, but and, and I mean that in a great way. Like He knew that it was a massive game. There was huge points up for grabs. This was going to be his first appearance in that game. So I could tell he wasn't trying to you know blow anybody out of the water, but he didn't put too many feet wrong and he mm -hmm. yeah, seemed a little bit skittish at times, but I think you're right. I think, you know, it's a good time to be a midfielder showing up to this Liverpool team because they could use the enforcement. So you know that you're likely going to get some minutes and yeah. it's good that Klopp integrated them right away. And I always like to compliment coaches for this, but anytime a new player comes in and looks comfortable and integrated into their side, I'm always very wowed by that. You I feel like think it takes I a while. I feel like Klopp's one manager too, that throws players at right in right away. Mm -hmm. I love that. A pretty you know? immediate manager. So, um, that's definitely the case. What do you think of uh, what do you think of Newcastle? I guess in terms of the match because they're the ones that um, obviously had the the advantage it being eleven v ten. So do you think that it's more? I think maybe we learned a little bit more I about think, Newcastle. I think for than New, we did uh, for me, I think Newcastle have a long way to go, and if they want to contend for top four, they really really need to figure out. Um, they need to, like this is a game they should have won. They they came off the back of City and Liverpool, obviously coming in a rough shape of form. I think this is a game where they need to take three points if they really really want to push for top four and get those points. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is this is a game that you watch and you, I think, have concerns for what Newcastle are going to bring to the table, especially as they compete for Champions League. So they they did dom- they did do a good job coming out of the gates. They were at home, so that's why I was very nervous going to the match because I thought yeah. they come out, they get an early goal. That's yeah. exactly what they want. They get a man up. Like it should have been three nil by halftime. Yeah, they should have not taken their foot off the gas whatsoever. So I think it does lead reason to be slightly concerned as a Newcastle fan. But I don't know. They still have a really strong team. I don't think the players strung it together. I mean, Eddie Howe, maybe his game plan wasn't the best, but they're not a team that's like meant to necessarily attack. They're not a team that is expected to attack for 90 minutes and be successful. They're a team that is probably going to hit on the counter, do be a very good block of eight in that low block, defend the hold possession at times, but they pick their moments to go. Anthony Gordon was their best player by miles. And him and, coming off completely oh, yeah. changed the game tonally. That's I, I agree with your take on I think it did fall to the players. Maybe Eddie Howe's game plan wasn't the most positive, but uh, early loss for Newcastle, but really tough loss for Newcastle too. This was sort of a, a fraudster match on their end. I think people will be able to hold this result over their heads and say... Hey, if you can't get it done in this scenario, what makes you think you'll get it done in Champions League group play even? Don't mm-hmm. show up with the weak shit to Champions League, which, by the way, the draw is this Thursday, so they'll find out who they're going to be up against for the first time in quite some time. Um, but yeah, not not to overstate this loss because I think they'll rebound with a win pretty early on. They still have a lot of quality in that side, but it would be concerning if I'm Eddie Howe to look at how the game was shifted tonally when I brought off Gordon because... Not that I think it's in, they're in a position where they're going to rely on him too much, but he was really the only bright spot in a team that has quite a bit of impressive forward. The, Almiron looked okay in spurts too. He had a couple really big his, chances, but his final third a bit like finishing, I think, was and decision making was poor. I think this you're is talking gonna, about you talking about Anthony Gordon Al, Almiron. I, Almiron. I think yeah. I think this is going to expose Eddie Howe, and if they are a team that can't go forward, a lot of teams are just going to sit in against them because. He's going to have to switch up his whole game plan when it comes to that. He's gonna really going to have to rely on more of his attacking-minded players to create chances for them rather than using them for counterattacks and using their pace for breaks because that's really like not a sustainable... I mean, it is sustainable. It, it's, it's one less to the league, but Newcastle is a team built... They're trying to build like a super team now. They're yeah. in the process of getting these top players, these top midfielders. Isak, he's going to need service. I'm not saying that it's super concerning, but I think it's just going to expose Newcastle a bit this season. And we talked about how legitimate they're going to be. And it might be a wake up call season when teams really, really focus on how they're going to be set up and what, what results they really don't take advantage of. He didn't, uh, Isak, I, I was kind of disappointed. He didn't look Same. good. He didn't look good in, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like, like you said, like not on the counterattack and half play, like yeah. when, like in the possession, like he didn't really like touch the ball. He wasn't like, yeah. I don't know. His off ball play isn't great. He I don't want to like exaggerate. So I'm not gonna say he had a terrible game, but like he was quiet. Like I didn't really see a lot. It happens too much, quite frankly. It's still it's still popping up at times where we know how quality a striker he can be. He has a lot of Premier League goals in him, but far too many times we're saying this in, in large games. He just isn't a factor, he, and, and I think that sort of spreads a, a, among the front three a little bit. Gordon, the exception, obviously, and. I don't can't even remember if they brought on Harvey Barnes or not, but he, he's a, a guy who I, uh, Gordon got sub. Gotcha. So and it, and a like for like sub, I like that it's a positive sub from Eddie Howe. It's still saying I want to go out there and get another goal, but yeah, again, not to like look too much into this result individually, but Newcastle are gonna. There's a lot of people looking at them this year thinking you're a fake top six club, quite <laughs> frankly. Like yeah. you, you are a pretender. It's just a lot of flashy money that's being thrown in lately, and maybe there's a good skeleton there, but. They're going to have a tough task, I think, convincing a lot of people. Are you guys convinced of their quality, or do you think they like are not really a top six club? I'm not convinced yet. I think this is they're doing it the right way, taking their time and not they for sure. They for also sure. can't splash the cash. I was watching the documentary that they released on Amazon, and um, they they're not a they're, they don't drive, drive a lot of revenue, so they can't spend a lot of money that they have access to, and that conflicts with who they can buy. And I think while that is conflicting they can't just buy players that are these big names i think they're also doing it the right way and taking it slow but to think that they're going to be this top four every single season club and like go far in the champions league i think champions league is going to hurt them badly i don't think they have enough depth in the squad they can't invest so much money to, to build the squad bigger than it already is so i think 
there's going to be a lot of hurdles this season for them, and it we, it may be shocking for some people to see them out of the top four, in my opinion, or even top six. It, well, um, I'm convinced for top six personally. Yeah, I I think against the lower I think against lower sides, they're easily you can tell when the game starts that they are above the opponent. Like that's true. They did to, go for the throat. Yeah, not to like shit on like Fulham or like Bournemouth or like mm-hmm. clubs like that. United. But like, but, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. what were we talking last season? I but when you, uh, I don't remember, <laughs> but when they play, I can like Eddie Howe's game plan for them is like for the lower clubs. It works like a charm. I yeah. think they, they definitely look a little bit more dominant. It's against the top six clubs where they battle. Obviously like Liverpool is a battle and they've they done it before, but awesome, like a just while. a little yeah, bit, a little bit more consistency. And I think, They'll be there, but there's just too I, much I'm, quality right now. Too yeah, much yeah, especially with Villa and every, just everyone. Everything that is going a, on. a team that a clubs like like Trabzon Spore or like Shakhtar <laughs> will like really eye up, and they'll be like, "Oh, I want to have a run at these boys." Like, I think <laughs> I think we can have a go at them. Br- bring me their neck. That's what the Shakhtar guys say. We will step on their throats. <laughs> the game will be over in ten minutes. And I feel like that could happen. Like they could show up and really get truly embarrassed, and then. Bad reflection on Eddie Howe, too. I mean, like, the stakes are going to get way higher for him now that he's been there for a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. I, think, I, I think he did mess up the game. <laughs> quite a bit. The board <laughs> die hard moment. That was, that was like a cod cut scene. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The board backs him based off what I've seen on the documentary. And obviously, until he starts losing. Yeah, until he starts losing. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tough times. Um, I guess a major discussion is out of Liverpool and Newcastle is Mo Salah. And the rumors Huge. of him potentially on his Huge. way out for a very, very big price tag. He's not. It is rumored. He's Liverpool not. has stated that he is not for sale. He's not going anywhere. Every, I see. I, I kind of feel the I think he might be going. He's not going so, anywhere. I mean, I think there is a chance that he could go. Um, would I be upset if he does? Initially, yes. And then it depends what kind of business we do after the well, fact. But we would be scratching out this season, which I think is a big gamble. I think he'll he could be for sale next season. Like who knows? My question to you guys: a lot of money though. What a lot so, of money? So the, the the figure floated today was 160 million dollars. That's U.S. dollars. So it's slightly less than that. What is it like 130 million pounds? Probably. Yeah. For the fee, Mo is going to make what? he makes in a week at Liverpool in a day in <laughs> Saudi <laughs> League. So his his pay would be comparable to Ronaldo and Neymar in the Saudi League. AKA top of the Saudi League, yeah. really. Um so if you guys I'm curious to hear your take on this, were Liverpool's ownership being that Salah's thirty one years old, he hasn't looked as clinical to start the season, but he still offered an assist against yes. the castle. Would you sell him <laughs> Or would you keep them? Sell like, them. what is the I better would, uh, valuation and how would you well, approach so, it? From my standpoint, and this is not meant to be a direct comparison between the two players, but I speak as a supporter of a club who has just sold their prized medallion striker uh, for a lot of money. I didn't think he was going to go either, but I also had a realization in the back of my mind that the team that wanted to buy him had can't say no money and might make a can't say no offer. That's why I think he'll end up going. I think this will end up getting pushed through in the final minutes of the window. Um, I think if I'm MSG ownership, I, I go ahead and sell. I think Liverpool, especially Klopp, is, I'll, I'll go to Klopp and say, hey, I'm going to put you in a really difficult position this season. And you're not going to be happy about this. But one, I'll give you about 100 mil to spend. Probably, unfortunately, won't have time to do the business probably this window. But you could really pop off in January and say to Klopp, hey, I'll give you 100 million to go get a couple different players and we won't miss out on them like we have this window. But it's a tough ask for Klopp, but I do it because... I think Liverpool, especially our team that are good about adapting and moving on, putting in somebody else who can end up, they can go get Matoma in January. Like I'm just p- pitching crazy ideas. Like right. with all that money, they could go and get somebody really Mbappe. good. So go and get Mbappe. And, and like, oops. I, I agree with all that. And I think sell is the way to go. I also think if they are going to believe in Darwin to be that 75 million pound signing, they need to be okay with letting Salah go. Because if they are worried about goals, then why would you sign a player like Darwin? Because Dude, Liverpool recruits so well. Yeah, too. I, I, I think Tottenham recruit like shit. Liverpool actually I, put the money to good use. So like, I think like I think when it comes to the positions that Salah fills, they're they're covered. They're gonna get goals. They're gonna get assists. Luis Diaz, Jota, 
They'll they'll get goals here and there. He's dope, but a winger then, a winger who scores goals a dime a dozen now. Like, but like Darwin Nunez has got to be the guy when it comes to scoring goals. Gakpo obviously will hopefully will be involved more, but I think like if they're confident in the signing they made in Darwin, they have to be okay with letting Salah go, and they can use that money, like Tristan said, to fill the midfield more the or defense and obviously replace him down the road. But I think it makes the most sense to sell a player that is. Unfortunately, seems like he's checked out mentally, based upon a couple games. Mm. Uh, no, no, no. I think no, no, no. Uh, checked I, I out. Don't, I don't harsh. disagree with no, that. Not, <laughs> not checked out, but I feel like there is not a love, a true love there between him and I think a Liverpool faith. I, I truly believe I, that. I think I, there's I, a, no. I think there's a love. I just think that the that the situation, the offer that he has, that might distort his brain. He has pissy like, feelings about Liverpool. I think. I don't think he does. No, I that's think a, that's a crazy. My point is, I think. Like how he acts when he gets subbed off in That's games once. like that. Like, no, that was, Sadio has done that. No, that, he's been, that was one game. Same thing about Sadio. Like I, I also think he was ready to go when an, when any offer came in, even one that maybe he knew wouldn't work out that well. So I, I'm not saying he doesn't love. I'm not saying it's a shitty relationship because yeah, he's maybe your best, your club's best ever player. But I don't think there's this crazy like red. My blood runs red with Liverpool. Like I just think with the offer on the table, it's gonna he's gonna do it. It's gonna take his brain elsewhere and. It makes sense. Like it, it's the perfect time to separate these two parties and not see his career go south when you can make so much money off of him. You can have a proper goodbye, and the, like they're getting a, so Plus, much money. It's not like he's leaving for like four, forty-five million. No, he's I leaving know. the like club Sadio with Leffers. so much he, money. He won a Champions League and a Premier League with you guys. He has a lot of trophies. He leaves nothing behind. Like it's one thing if Kane goes thinking, "Shit, and I money. never got to win." <laughs> but but he he has no. He looks at Liverpool and thinks, "Man, yeah, job done." Man, that is a hell of a career I had with that club. So I would keep him. Yeah, that's you think I it's would, like a no? It's a no I think price. I would, I would say, I would say no. A hundred and say if they come say we'll buy him for a hundred and sixty million dollars, and that's year and that's pounds. We'll make him the most expensive player who's ever played football before. And you don't think FSG would take that offer? It, that is a can't say no offer. And I think they'll just keep they'll keep making offers. You can get those well, goals in Darwin. They're getting good him right the main now. Man. That's why I think Liverpool need to ride not, the market. They need to not jump at the first offer. Like that is no, the offer. Sure. That's no, no, the no. biggest offer you'll get. Yeah, but who's no, no, to no, say that will, offer? They'll won't. keep and they'll, that Saudi offer will keep growing. No, I like the yeah. I like City don't will, get the first one. Yeah, like City were willing to offer for Kane a hundred million two seasons ago. So like, I think it would be in Liverpool's best interest to keep him for this season. I think. What we, is his current contract through? Uh, I do not know. I think he signed a four year deal. He just he just resigned, didn't yes. he? Uh, okay, last there. year. Uh, yeah, I think it was prior to last year because that's when he got his wage wage bump. Right. Either like way, I mean, I yeah. don't. I think this this we've seen plenty of deals go till the very last few moments, and I do think they'll they'll just keep coming back, Connor. They'll keep coming back and saying, "Okay, we'll increase it twenty mil, and we'll give you a couple more add ons." Okay, does does that sound good to you? And they'll say, "Well, he's well. got he's got two years left on his. He signed okay. a three year deal last summer." Yeah, two years left, and you won't get this money for him in two years. I don't think I either. Think we'll so. get it for him in a year, though. I don't think you, I don't think you will. They, you're not getting Saudi, less. You're not getting less than a hundred. The Saudi league just paid a boatload of money yeah, for a uh, busted Neymar. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're gonna pay the money because all they Different, care about though. they all they care about Kids. is the name. Salah has a huge following from Africa, like and true. Egypt. Like he brings a lot, so I think. And it's the, a Muslim country. The, the, That's true. The valuation will Good be call. there next summer. Maybe it's not 160 million. Like maybe it's not that. And maybe it's a hundred or a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty. Like if he has a good season, there's no reason they wouldn't offer that. He still has time left, so he's he's not allowed to leave on a free. So I think we need to keep him for this season because otherwise, I think Liverpool's level will drop. I don't think it's worth sacrificing this season on a whim of an offer from a Saudi league club to anticipate that all our young players are going to come through. Because Darwin is still a young player. Sure, he's a seventy million dollar man, but like, I mean, he just had the fucking perform. The performance he just put that's in what I mean. proves to, his valuation. So why not? So sell like that's what would you, you be s- confident putting all of your like all I've of your faith in one from, player from Darwin? Just because you, you have Louis money. Diaz, you have Jota, you have Gakpo, players you invested in. Yeah, Louis but those Diaz yeah, but like, those are, they're, they're, they aren't injury. Salah. Yeah, Jota. But. I feel like if you sell Salah, like you're just throwing away your game. Like I don't know what Liverpool's game plan is, but I don't think it's a rebuild right now. Like I don't oh, think. That's like, I still think there's an. I, I know this might not be the popular opinion. I think there's just enough in that side to where you'll be relevant to like the fourth or fifth place. There's an extra Champions League spot up for grabs, and they could really again go bananas January. Yeah, but that's not what Liverpool. Matoma, I think he'll get. They go. He they, plays they, off they, the left side, but we we're chasing trophies. We're not just t- chasing top yeah. four. So like, yeah, maybe Sabah's like could slide into that right wing position. I think he'd be deadly mm-hmm. there, but. 
I and think we you need go to buy get another somebody. midfielder, and then every team on the face of the planet could be a good knows thing, that Connor. we're desperate for players. And you have the money for it. So yeah. what's the problem? Like, we, what? Yeah, but we could get two players for $200 million. No, I think Matoma, I mean, Matoma's not going to go for more than 70 mil. Stupid Jan. Say, say, say. I would rather have Salah because Salah's going to get me 20 goals and 10 assists mm. this season. Hopefully. Imagine. It'll be a bad season. I think here's what I think. I'll probably score six. I'm just looking, United, out ba- just looking out for your best interest, <laughs> yeah. man. As a Manchester United fan. Salah is going to go for like 160 mil in the final moments of the window. I think in January you're going to go and get Matoma and a Stupin Jan because you're just going to realize that Andy Robertson's best days are behind him. You and need a new left back. So oh, and then I think Tottenham you're going to go straight Rob. Tottenham will be about 10 points clear of everybody <laughs> by then. So you don't have to worry about Tottenham, Andrew. <laughs> They're going to be long gone by the time January is here. Believe you me. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about them quite yet. We do have to talk about West Ham United, maybe the Premier League's hottest side. That's crazy. <laughs> look, I like. I don't think this is this is this will last. I think we maybe got like one or two more games of like crazy games good West in. Ham. Three games in, plus they're not like a deep enough side to just do this the entire year. I think West Ham also had crazy good spurts last season too. They did, but yeah, they started no really way. bad. They finished fourteenth. They finished off. They, they finished fourteenth. They, they, they did not have a okay. good spurt. They were terrible no, they, last season. They're a they team that okay. has. They're a team that has spurts. Is my is what he's saying. So oh, okay. They're not. They're, they're not capable a, of. They were, they were amazing in the conference league, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's why I'm thinking that. They, were, they won a major. Trophy. The season yeah, before yeah. that with Lingard, they were like on a roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that they also finished. He was seven. scoring like yeah. half volleys from like 25 yards out. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> shoot, I mean, a lot of players <laughs> playing some insane ball on that side. Again, Pocketa with a really, really good shift. Antonio is. It's so funny that he goes on a, a pop podcast. I'm not sure which podcast it is, but he <laughs> he talks shit a, about Richarlison a, on every every single time a, he goes he's on. Such a twerp. I can't stand him. <laughs> he really, yeah, I mean, he's, he's talking I mean, shit, he's, scoring I mean, goals. I mean, he's, he's massive, so I'm not gonna say he's a twerp. But yeah, him and Calum Wilson, two <laughs> shitheads on the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a tough deal. But uh, I mean, again, really, really good stuff. The counterattack that uh, Bowen finished off at the end. I mean, insane. That was, gr- that was gross. The, the stop and the finish on that was nuts. But they're definitely the flavor of the moment right now. Probably the last team you want to run into, but I do think this bubble will pop at some point. The the tweets about it were so funny. Like, this is British heritage, and it's like 80%, 20%. It's like, four, it's like 40 attempted passes, and it scores 3-1. <laughs> yeah. It's a picture of a day of David Moyes. We like, yeah, invented yeah, yeah. football. He's like... We literally invented this shit. It was on the topic of David Moyes because he seems like a guy you either rate or you don't rate. But he's definitely on the. Uh, it's either side. It's crazy. He's pretty pretty divisive. I I think he's getting the best, especially right now. But even at the worst of times, he's getting the best out of that side. I, mm-hmm. I credit him massively. I don't know that. Like I would slate him for a big club move necessarily if one were to get opened up with any of the clubs. I think that time has passed. I think so too, but he could make a pretty good living making like beast mid-table clubs. I think he's in a great position for his age, for the shit he's been through at United. I think he probably has just like a bad taste in his mouth working with a bigger side. Got a chip on his shoulder for sure. And and he's proven that he is a quality manager and he's that guy that, I mean, he kept West Ham up the season that, they were close to getting relegated after Slavin Bilic, and then he was won a trophy. Let, then he was let like, go, and then he came back because they did poorly with Pellegrini, mm. and then he took them to a eventually took them to a trophy. So Pellegrini. I think he's the guy that like West Ham couldn't have, couldn't ask for like a better manager at this he's point. Like the next Roy Hodgson. So yeah, yeah. So I like, think that's the, yeah. that's the vibe I get from him. I think he's there. I think West Ham are in a good spot. I don't know how they'll fare this season, but. If it is to go more south in the prem, then maybe you part ways and find more of a young, a, like a younger manager to fit the mold of these players and like the Paquetas and uh, the Bowens and um, the missing on some players, obviously. But I th- Pablo I th- Fornals, yeah, for, I feel like th- they they have a really good core at this club. And David Moyes, I mean, he kept them up last season. Obviously, they were like it was they were floating with relegation at times. But I don't know. I think. They're in a good spot with him, and he's a good, he's a proven manager. So. They they had a bit of an injury bug last season. They did. I yeah. think they've they've gone out and proven that they wanted to add depth, and they obviously signed Kudus, so that's going to be massive. As a Spurs fan, I'm like punching the air, not them not going in for an affordable striker who has Champions League goals in him. As really again, like Jalen said, scored a hat trick over the weekend. This guy, like by all accounts, could get a lot of Premier League goals and. One of those dudes, I think it'll just he just went under the radar. There's a lot of clubs that need strikers right now, um, and him going to West Ham is huge business from them. Yeah, so because they sent that, who did they send that guy? That wicked Italian Scamaca. They sent him packing, right? 
or do they still have him? He had a poor, poor season. I mean, it just didn't anything, work actually. out with him. Well, I guess the like, thing was, like, Sumaka's, like, really technical. He's kind of – he reminds me of, like, Arnautovic. Yeah. Like, just, like, really good with your feet but really yeah. big. But, Racist. I mean, not <laughs> – <laughs> could be. But uh, – <laughs> But David Moyes, like I said, British Heritage doesn't really. They play a lot they of kick, mash. they play a lot of kickball. He so got transferred I, to Atalanta, so I don't think he, he was miserable. I think the entire so time it, did, it didn't really match. I don't think Moyes got along with him. Like not like they probably were cordial, but I mean like yeah. as a striking yeah. partnership. So yeah, it was probably in best interest to leave. And I mentioned this last week. Uh, I feel like the the telltale sign that your club is playing well is just the overall vibes and celebrations. And I feel like the locker room at West Ham is a pretty tight knit bunch for the most part. It's a few goofballs in there, a few characters. I think it's just everyone with their phone out, and Lucas Paqueta is just doing his dance the entire yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Jared Bowen's Lucas, the FIFA the guy. Thing. I mean, it is a big club. Like they're huge. The heart. They're in a London club playing in a big stadium. They play ball. They throw out bubbles everywhere. They're bubbles. Everywhere. Everywhere. I feel like pretty, pretty cool touch. It's an attractive club to go play for, for sure. So one of those stadiums, though, where the even the front row seat is like a fucking mile from the pitch. Yeah, I kind of like yeah. that. I like that. It makes it seem like it's a oh. Serie A state, not in a bad way, but it's like an Olympic track as well. well. It's, it's yeah. called the Olympic Stadium. <clears throat> the Lon- West Ham's London, oh, stadium, London isn't Stadium, it? Stadium. But all but of the was. ones, a lot of the ones in Germany are like Olympic Stadion. I think it like, was Olympic Stadium before. At one point, yeah, you're yeah. the stadium guy, so I'm. A they have yeah, baseball yeah, games <laughs> there too. That's where they play all that when MLB goes to visit uh, and plays that's, that's a so game in London. They just put a bunch of dirt in the infield and. Everyone's really not. The yeah, grounds crew is the groundskeepers like, just pissed. Like weeping. Yeah. They're like, no. Enough dirt, mate. It is an Olympic Park, but it's called the London Stadium. I'm, They've definitely I had any, what, track any, and field events there. Yeah, anything for sure. The track or it was the former Olympic Stadium, but now it's the former Olympic Stadium. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, another big shift from JWP. Bags of goal. I mean, he's... He's Tristan's guy at the moment. Rate him or don't rate him, he just is simply showing up for I, West Ham side. Before we get into this... I. To preface what the the conversation is, Tristan believes that there is a there has been players. I think he's there, the best midfielder. Teams to have, have missed. Play the game. Teams have missed out. Teams have missed <laughs> out on this on signing him. Like the likes of Chelsea, the likes of Liverpool, the likes of United. May, maybe you could say Arsenal, but I think they're solid in midfield. But regardless, I think that's what you were getting at the other day in the group chat, and it was kind of like how that's one of the things. Yeah, how, for but sure. that was like what started it all. I don't think that. Chelsea missed out on him because they have a player in him like Gallagher who's young who can fill that role and they can they, they their main issue was the CDM to support Enzo and his and, and Gallagher aside him so for me at Chelsea didn't really miss out I think United could have gone for JWP I think Liverpool could have gone for JWP um, but I think in terms of like who he is against in, in the in the football world he is a kind of a a cult hero in, in the Prem and I think he had brings tons of quality but there's a reason why he was at Southampton for so long. He wasn't sought after for the big clubs. I think that's just that's a, there's a reason why for that. I think he, for me, I think my biggest argument and my biggest compliment is he is living proof that the market is not as fucked as everyone says it is. Yeah, there's certain players who can really drive up a bargain, and I think Caicedo is one of them. I think we'll see if he ends up being worth, but he's almost the 150 mil is almost you can't even live up to it. You know, it's almost a number that you can't even really ever. No one will ever be fully satisfied with that with that big of an investment. Madison has gone for less. JWP has gone for less. I'm trying to think of other players who McAllister. McAllister has gone for far less. You could argue that they're all could have gotten all three. You could have gotten all three for that amount. So I think he's just proof that Chelsea are making this look a lot more difficult. And I really don't know what's going on with their recruiting department. But yeah, and I just yeah, I, I rate him. I don't. And, I think I think I he's rate like, him too. I, I rate him. I rate, I'm a JWP. Stan. Jalen hates him. Yeah. Just for the record, I don't hate him. I, I doesn't hate him, but I think he Jalen does definitely doesn't rate him as highly as we do. I think that's fair, right? No. But I also think he was done wrong. I think he deserved to move much earlier. So do from I. Southampton, yeah. like I he don't would know have what like, was going on there. Like he's he just, was right. He's kind of a suck it up guy. Liverpool. He does. Well, the, the work. thing is, it's a, not that he's obviously not Harry Kane, but he has loyalty. Like Southampton yeah. is a huge That's historical right. club. Right. Like he didn't right. just want to leave. And yeah. there was, I mean, he's been there so long that he's been in the highs of them being in like fifth and sixth. Yeah. So like, I can understand why he stayed. I used to watch his U twenty three England videos. Now the guy's twenty nine or <sighs> oh, thirty years old. Where like, does the time go? Yeah. See, and I think one of one of the points you might have mentioned, and if this is incorrect, please correct me. But I think you mentioned he's like sort of, or he's sort of like an. Every, you might have said this. He's like an everyday, every man sort of English midfielder. But I feel like yeah. there aren't a lot of guys that 
can whip in a really consistent corner every time. I think Don't really the, turn the ball over a lot. Like that makes him seem like a common, oh, he's just like an English midfielder. He can kind of just whip in a corner and put a good shift in. But I think that's kind of what makes him uncommon amongst the rest of the field, that there aren't a lot of guys that do that. I think he's one of the most technical players in the prem on the ball. From a set piece, from a corner, just balls through. I think his ability to pick a pass out is like top class. So I never really underrated him at all. I thought he's always been a really, really good player. But I probably overrate him a, a little bit. That's probably where a lot of I just think that from, there's but. certain players that thrive in certain systems, and who's to say that he would have thrived in the big six sides just because of what they're asked of and the, the pressure. I think he could have handled it, but it's more of like we will never know. Do we you, will think, never do you know. all think that Liverpool – finish your point. Oh, no. I was just going to – no, you finish that. Do you actually. all think that Liverpool missed out on not getting a guy like him? No. no. I think that I think it was a massive I, miss from I them. just don't think – Massive I, miss. I, I think that he's a valuable player as an eight, but Liverpool need a six, and we need two of them. I, I think we secured who we needed in Saba's line McAllister to sit in those, those forward attacking midfielder roles, but – JWP as a six, I think not you, as much of a holder. I get it. You lose some of the grace that he has on the ball when he's just pinned in defending, kind of like what we saw with Declan at West Ham. You didn't get to see him flourish as much as we would have liked because he was pinned deep, defending more. So it, it could have worked at Liverpool, but I don't think it would have been the best bet for Liverpool. Um, I mean, for the price, it might have just made sense to do it because you can rotate him wherever, but. I think United could have used him. He is a player. I, I do think he could flourish. And like I don't. I think he's a player. I don't think that. I, I just don't think so. He's no. he's Christian. He's like, if he had gone to a larger club, he is Christian. Eric. Like that's my. He that's could my do point. the thing. Stay, Jay, Christian stay, yeah, Eric stay your case. Does. No, like I agree. Like I just think every team. Like I there's. I would not substitute James Ward Prowse over Erickson. I would I, over. I would over. I would have over Mount. Really? Yeah. No, over I would Mount. not. Yeah. The, the word though, JWP did, right? Erickson like is. I he, keep trying to find middle he, ground he, with you on he this. Is, and I he just is can't. underrated in my because what he did when he first came to United, I mean, him, Cass, like, they changed the team. Oh, I, I was saying that today. I think Erickson is like, but I'm right. saying we brought in Mount to replace him. JWP but would if, be a better If JWP be better was signed, I think I'd be more, I was, would have been, been that's more That's a excited. great, dude. That's like, that's probably the best example I of said, all the midfielders I've, I mentioned, like, of that whole bunch. I'm glad you brought that I up. I just actually. think that, like, while Mount is good, I I think there's so much pressure on him as a player that if JWP can JWP in, he just does the things that just do the job, yeah. That is asked. That, yeah, that's why I think JWP would work in any system, no matter the size of the club, because he, or any club he, he is to me the Christian Eriksen yeah, that yeah. never got the big move. Like Christian Eriksen got the big move, did the big things, played at the highest level. If JWP had made a move sooner, I think he could have had the exact same career that Christian. What's Erickson that guy? Had. Liverpool played Harry something a couple of seasons. He was Harry the, Wilson. Yes, Harry Wilson has sure has caps for Liverpool, and JWP doesn't have a cap for a top six club. I think like he would play a guy like Harry Wilson out of the water, and they're kind of similar guys, you know, a yeah, in a way. midfielder who likes to take free kicks, likes a long range pass, maybe sort of a sort of a hard no, nose stylish guy that's what i'm saying though like that, though. i totally agree that he never got a move he maybe actually deserved yeah. he maybe could have jailing he could have won jailing over i know i, I, no, I just think there's always a player i'm gonna, like there's always players you're going to choose over jwp that play in that position chelsea i would pick enzo over jwp at liverpool i would pick McAllister. Yeah. at united bruno easily yeah like there's just players there's certain players that just provide certain things and i and I value JWP. I think no, right. like, like yeah. he did, like the technician. He is an elite technician. But he's I mean, where he belongs right now. You, right? He, you there was there's times like when he got called to England, you'd be like, I understand that's why true. you got yeah, why you nah, got called up, but you true. are going to ride the pine so yeah. hard. And like you're sitting there wondering why, so why, why? Like we know why. Like he, like you, that's, that's football. <laughs> it, exactly, it's just yeah. football. Like I, like I hate to say it. Like he's probably probably the most technical player in training. But like when it comes to the sport, like there's just players that are there's just another level. And I think there's other players that have either filled that or can do that at those big clubs. Yeah, and that was like the whole. If like, they start treating free kicks like technical fouls, where you can pick any guy to take them, and you can just have a guy run off the bench to take your free kick, <laughs> he'll get into any side. That England yeah, side, he'll, he'll always have a spot. Yeah, he'll play he'll keep six. that right leg warm, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody gets fouled, he's, he's, like, a, he's like a pitcher in the bullpen, yeah. just like like kicking he's the ball. The closer, <laughs> they play music as he runs out. But what he's doing for West Ham is amazing. Yeah, top draw. Well, what I'll be hopefully he continues. That's what I'm saying. When they're not playing the best football in the league, I wonder how he'll be. I think he'll. I think he'll still be the bright spot. I agree. I agree. Uh, 
We've got to talk about Spurs and more specifically Madison because we did just bring up Madison as one of those crazy bargain midfielders who, look, nobody will hear it coming from me because it's coming out of my mouth. But uh, are we talking maybe signing of the summer with James Madison? Too with James? Soon. Too soon. <laughs> so far, signing of the season so far. So far. I can't, I can't even think of all the signings. They're all in Saudi Arabia. I'd say Madison, <laughs> in terms of like the expectation and the, the shoes that, I guess maybe people thought he'd fill if Kane left. Not that they're the same player, but from a service perspective and assists, he's doing more than people, I think, expected. More than I expected. I thought Madison's a good player, but there's Spurs is such a difficult side to like really make an impact if you're not Harry Kane or Hungman's son. Mm. And it's just like Madison has had his ups and downs, and I just didn't think yeah. it, it would really mesh as well as it has. So I'd say, yes, I think he's been one of the signings of the summer so far. I think he's been the signing of the summer so far. It's been three matches. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. far, guys. I'm not uh, you didn't, prep, you didn't say that before. You said <laughs> You're right. Three so, matches in. It was the best signing over three I matches. I didn't yeah, I didn't expect him to settle in this quickly. It'd be Hamas Madison. He's always gonna have like the potential to maybe pick up a knock where he's gonna miss some matches. So I think that could factor in. I don't know. I Why think do you have it, to say shit like that, dude? It's just true. Like he's he, he's been hurt. He's still out of form with Lester. Decide he wants to go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> But I think <laughs> well, so we're far, but the ether. I will say Saba's lie is going to give him a run for his money in an attacking midfielder role because mm. he's looked phenomenal as well. It's uh, starting to be a, a, a crowded list in the Premier League in terms of a four because Odegaard comes to mind. Like Bruno, obviously, will always be in that conversation. AWP so he's going to be in the convo for signing a season. The, that could be that could be the case. Yeah, the the attacking midfield uh, sort of revolution going on in the Prem is pretty exciting to watch, but. Not so much a revolution, not like we're reinventing the wheel in any means, but there's just a lot of really exciting forward-thinking midfielders. But, yeah, I mean, bias, but, yeah, he probably would be my signing of the summer based on the fact that we're now playing that type of ball that Ange wants to play. He's, like, absolutely pivotal that. He's the outlet. He really is. He's the outlet guy and really just covers a lot of ground with the ball. He's really comfortable moving up the pitch and seems to also, more importantly, have a good partnership with Basuma, who has been... And he has an eye for goal, which is like in so important for Tottenham this season because he lost Harry Kane. Huge. Yeah. Like he, that first goal he scored on Bo- against Bournemouth, I'm like, wow, what a run in. Fuck wasn't that Richarlison? Like, what are you doing, Richarlison? <laughs> like, why is why is James Madison He's in the, the corner the like final this. touch? He's like doing all the runs that 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 Richarlison should be doing, but just isn't. So that's a whole topic in itself. Like, yeah, I would love to go and get another option as a striker. We're making it work right now because we're playing really beautiful, like free flowing, distributive ball too. So everybody's getting in on the goals. So yeah, you're gonna need someone when things aren't going well. You need someone that can just like, even if he was just a poacher, dude. Yeah, I, even if I he mean. scored ten goals a season, if he just poached and got goals here and there, was good in the FA Cup. But he's he must do more than he's doing right now. He I'm trying must to think of do. a guy like that, like from past years. Just like when everything's going terrible, he'd just like knock a header and make, like it, th- make Fellaini, it three, make it three one. Charles Fellaini. Fellaini had the ball. Huh? Fellaini. Fellaini was that Fellaini. guy. I just I want I want every, I want Richarlison to play like Giroud, where he should try and head the ball in every single time a ball gets whipped in. Like Giroud just loved a, a, a header, Some one of the of one of the best finish. target men to ever play the game, literally ever. But um, I mean, back on Madison really quickly because I think this could be interesting. Not only has his Premier League career sort of taken a jump, but this could be huge for like when we talk about England call ups too. Because I'll just propose an England midfield to you guys right now based on form which would be James Madison up top being the most attacking midfielder, Jude sort of the both sides of the ball guy, and Declan as a holding guy. Like, that's just been thrown around as one of the potential midfield lineups. It's, it's a crowded England midfield, but I don't know. Like, James Madison could look at this and say, yeah, he might not, like, just now walk into the England team, but in terms of England call-ups, like, Gareth should reward this play, you'd think, right? I feel like Gareth doesn't do that, unfortunately. Yeah, like he Mount's sticks. Gonna be there. He sticks to his guys it's and fucking crim. It's actually it criminal. criminal. Like well, not is, even to be biased. I've, I've but always like, rated Madison over Mount. Like I always have, and I think Madison his biggest downfall is his injury issues. And but that's like saying Kane has injury. No, like but he does have him, but no, he still plays so many fucking also, games. Also, like. Madison has gone ghost longer than Mounted throughout a few seasons. Like you'd see Madison just like not play well or not play for like, and he was fit just because he just wasn't playing well. But I think. I like Gareth, to think that maybe he'd give him a, sh- you know, like just based so on why. form. So do I, but I think Gareth Salgate is just so stubborn in who he likes. He'll pick Eric Dyer before he'll pick James. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know who'll be walking well, that's through my the door. Point. I feel I like Mr. Will. Jordan Henderson will be strutting yeah, into yeah. that oh. midfield. That's my point. Awesome Saudi Saudi <laughs> he'll be the one player <laughs> that crazy, Southgate dude. calls back. That's my point. I think he'll just, like, 
Unfortunately, Madison won't get the chance that I think he deserves consistently enough to really make an impact on the England side. Look how long it took Jack Grealish to get a fucking starting position. Yeah. Like, I mean, you like that midfield, I mean, though? Sterling's going to be there, so, like, Sterling's going to be there. He will be. Sterling, be had, Sterling scored two After goals this race, weekend, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He scored the only two yeah, goals he'll need, need one to get goal, into that like, team. Yeah. Gal- no, I don't hate like, Sterling, but, like... I've seen enough. You need a national team, like, that rewards you on your form, not yeah, you rewards you favoritism. Yeah, yeah. It seems like more teams are starting to do that too. Like, my, oh, for sure, the famous Brazil Martinelli shout I made about a year ago, where I got my head taken off, but he he got the call. And I don't we think had, he played. Well, Brazil's, moment, Brazil's tough. Brazil's definitely a tough one for There's so many players, and they and then they always include a hometown crowd. But I think one squad that's also like that, not to go off topic, real just Spain. Spain is very oh, like yeah. can be cutthroat. A lot yeah, of the times. yeah. So. but I don't know. So, are you guys more? You think Madison? You think either? You think Madison might get an England call up out of all of this? Because the international oh, he'll, 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 he'll get two weeks. He'll two weeks by the sure, way. But I don't know. If two more play. match days. Yeah, true. Would like to think maybe he'd get a, a few. You, bet, you might want to hope he doesn't play. Honestly, dude, wouldn't be the worst thing. No, <laughs> like, seriously, keep him at like, home. But if, kind of a blessing in disguise if he doesn't get picked. I mean, the Euros. That's will, right. I think. The, I think the Euros would be the big deciding factor when he's like really I'm saying. had time to prove himself at. Tottenham he settled in and it's like if he can make a break at that moment it's like he'll be the very ripe age to be in that mid England team as a veteran player so it's like I think that'll be the test I really don't I think Southgate also leans on like international friendlies just to be like oh I am rotating the squad yeah yeah, but yeah. Then, like, he'll still select Maguire when it comes to any yeah. kind of like oh serious God. competition so he's so, he's if, he so gets gross. In, if he gets in for a friendly I don't know what that means for Madison but I do think he's in a way better position to get called up like I can't wait for tomorrow to switch his uh nationality what's yeah. what's his other nationality? I don't know but whatever it is <laughs> I hope <it> goes to <laughs> literally any other country I don't I don't care what he's just he doing to. 23 and me until he finds like, I'm not country. saying like, the guy, no 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 look see I can do this I'm not saying the guy's like Maldini all of a sudden but like <laughs> over the past few years he's won trophies just yeah, hey, yeah. I digress with the. Uh, if I was Southgate, you wouldn't have to convince me. He'd be at yeah, my we, side every had time. That, so had that I rate him highly. But uh, and then last guy I want to shout out is is Udagi, who's again by all accounts it's still very early on, but three matches in, it seems like we may have gotten a good one. Hey man, he's got the trim. He's part of the Mando. Man. He is solely vibes. He in a, in a way sort of reminds me of Luke Shaw where maybe like he doesn't look like he's the most athletic guy but really steady on the ball. Luke Shaw this season pre-injury pretty steady on the ball I mean he just looks very 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 comfortable that was the thing I was most impressed with this is and again and of all I hate Conte more than anything but I gotta credit him for Udagi because he's the one who said go out and get this guy he was on loan all last season with Udinese where he got a lot of minutes he was like one of the best left backs in Italy Comes here and man, uh, he's really, really been quality on the ball. I think he's going to be somebody that just continues to his stock will rise and rise. And look, you can toss Regulon to uh, McKenna, and everything will be a lot. <laughs> We've been trying to sell Regulon yeah. for like three seasons. <laughs> just, Mourinho's boy. We loan him, and then he just the loan just doesn't go, and then he's back. And I'll never, I'll never forget when Tristan was like in love with him. Like, dude, you loved him like you love Dougie right now. I just I love that, <laughs> getting my heart broken by la- by wingbacks. That's my thing. I also said Jed Spence was like the next train. <laughs> you, got, you guys are you were right. The Jed Spence he, train, dude. So Parisich, hard. although he played well, was also like oh my like, god. He's now like, just a winger. We've just catapulted to the best <laughs> left back in the game now. Like I do, I do love getting my heart broken over a left back. But left uh, wing back too. You guys make wing back signings look so hard too. Even the guy from last season. It seems like Pedro Poro. Yes. Hey, no, <laughs> Poro's look good this season. Like, yeah, he looks good. Uh, our back like, line actually for the first time is gonna is looks actually pretty good. Like we don't leak yet. Yeah, <laughs> the table because uh, the center back pairing is looking good too. But yeah, I mean he was one of the guys that stood out to me. He was an Alan Shearer's team of the week, and I was like, vibes, good pick, Alan Shearer. Yeah, Sometimes that, thanks, you kind of yeah. Usually you just put like a bunch of city guys in, but I would say you he actually his teams of the week are usually pretty, pretty bang decent. on the money. I, I I don't remember a lot of times. They're like it was FPL like, leaning though. Yeah, definitely so it's like FPL. Easy to leaning. pick them because you just pick the people there's with some, the most points. Yeah, there's some monetary ideas behind he's, those he's picks. So but, sick. Um, he has Brexit as shit. Uh, Spurs get three more points. Uh, Tristan, good vibes for the week. Arsenal drop points up a man against Fulham. You give you give a team a bonus corner and they're going to capitalize on it. Fulham are exactly that side. They are. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna. 
get some sneaky wins and draws this year. So and Jao Paulinho, who I think Marco Silva mentioned, like, hey, this is one of the reasons that we refused oh the, the sale of any Tim of any club because a lot of guys wanted him and he is quality. Andres yeah. Pereira too from I mean Phenomenal. former United guy obviously. There was no there we go. Shut there, there, we go, there we go, baby. Oh, oh, there we go. It up. There was no, also there's no way he meant to do that with the ball. <laughs> I agree. He, there was, he made no Ramsdale way. look there was, stupid there as hell. Was, he got, because Ramsdale's like, yeah, there's no way. He, there's yeah. no way he can fuck this up. That yeah. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. he went near post, and he was like, "What is one going of the best on? finishes I've ever seen?" I don't really. know why Ramsdale like turned around to run too. Didn't it was Saka, like, right? Well, I think he hit it, and he. Tr- oh, yeah, I don't, had the bad. Back I don't know what it was, but when he turned and fell, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious." By the way, I guess the pressing question, I guess for Arsenal is Kai Havertz. What do we think of Kai Havertz? There's a lot of there's a lot hey, of debate. He's done a lot of good. Flowing around right now. There's people saying he's Mesodosio without the skill. There's people saying give him time. What there's, makes him Mesodosio? Just cause look he, like at the end of the day, I think whatever good anybody could say he's contributed is not mega tangible. If you disagree, I but. So what was his price tag again? Seventy. Sixty five mil out there. Something Wasn't like seventy that. mil? Sixty five mil. Up there. Uh, it's it not too fair much to say he's been like riding off a Champions League final goal, but in the same vein, I, he's just not been a contributing player since. And in this in this Arteta side, they're so intense and they're so high pressing. It just doesn't seem like he has that hunger to really. He's it's not going to work in the midfield because they're not going to be a strong enough midfield with him and the other players there. And he just needs to be a nine who wants to like use his height and score with his head. That's what you. That's what Arsenal need right now. Like the. The link up stuff, the stuff that's hard to, to grab, the stuff is always great. He's quality, does this, that, the other. Need goals right now. Need a nine who can go in and, and use his size and be quality and and be that like ruthless finisher that I just I just don't know that he is. Unless you guys disagree. I well, think that's unfair. I think Kai Havers is worth sixty five mil if he's a center forward, but yeah, he's right. not right now worth the sixty. Like playing where Odegaard would play normally or no, like, no, playing Keddy is playing. Where Keddy is playing, but playing. like when he was at like Chelsea with like Tuchel, like right. just like pull a little bit in, and like I understand the need for goals, and I think he can score goals. I th- sorry, please. no, 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 but like I was just gonna say, like he, I think his value is more in the center where he can just like do what he wants. With him at the eight, he is very much zonal. He's very much more tied to a structure, and I just don't think he's a player that should be structured. And I think, yeah, and on top of that. We looked at him with Tuchel, which is which was a system that is the opposite of Mikel Arteta's. If he was playing the false nine, I think he would be such a big player for Arsenal because he's dropping deep. He's, I mean, he's good on the ball. He's he's a big player, can hold up pretty well if he if he's confident enough. And then you have players like Saka, Martinelli on the outside, getting those runs in, runs high up. I feel like. With two, like you don't have that. You didn't have that with Tuchel. You didn't have that with Lampard. You didn't have that with Potter. I forgot about Frank. Um, and so I think with how this Arteta side plays, he would favor so well in that position. But it's just so hard when a player like that is so like not confident at the moment. And he wasn't confident leaving Chelsea. I don't think he wasn't confident at Chelsea. And with everything going on right now, he's not confident. He's not a seventy million dollar player. So there's a problem there. But, and it's but, so, but why is that? I, I think this, I am all aboard like getting on a player when they're not performing, but he's playing in midfield. And he, when's the last time he played in midfield? If Arteta is a good this manager, he needs, to, he needs to quit it with the bullshit and play a player yeah, that I he don't. signed for 70 million in the position that he should play. Well, you know I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm not a McCall. I'm you're, not you're hating on Kai, bro. And I think. Arteta needs what to are you ta- I didn't hate on Kai at all. If at he's all. hating on Kai, then Wait, I was definitely hating I think, I think you all are. Yeah. No, I'm not hating on Kai. I want him to... Why am I? But Andrew, yeah. Andrew, what are you, guys, like, ta- you're saying like his confidence is low. First, First of all, guys, like can you stop hating on Kai so yes, much, please? please? Like, I, I didn't do that. You guys are hating. I'm not hating on all. You're hating. Am I including this? I want him. He's a player low on confidence. He needs to do all these things. He needs to go score goals. Well, he's playing in the game. How the fuck is he supposed to score goals? I didn't say score goals. I said he needs to change positions. You're right. Listen, hey. Okay, he does. That's what I said. But that's not Kai Havertz's fault. That's Mikel Arteta's this, fault. But I'm saying the reason why it's so hard to get a player to get to that point, even if he was put at the false line, is because he's not confident right now. So if you, even if he was put at the false line, it would Arteta's take him fault. so he long is, to get... He is miles better than Nketiah. Yeah, I know Trossard oh, played as the nine. You're not listening to my argument. You're not listening to my point. My point is that I, I feel for him in the sense that even if he does get put there, it will still take time for him to get confidence to start playing the way that we know Kai Havertz can play. I'm backing him and saying that it's going to take time. 
time, and I'm backing the people that are saying that. I'm backing Kai. So I'm not. So you need to slow your high horse. I didn't hear yeah, Arteta's name your, once. I didn't hear yeah, Arteta's Connor, name once. Connor, stop calling everyone a fucking hater, man. I think Jeez. you need to go back and and hater. kind of relive the moment you guys yeah. finished outside the top four last season and really rethink. Everything. There we go. There we go. Now it's really kicked <laughs> off. You make a good point about Arteta because I do yeah. think that there's and you, and there's plenty of Arsenal fans who would agree with you as well. They would also say. Enough with the tinkering and teetering. We know what our best. Why do we know what our best lineup is, and you don't know what our best yeah. lineup is? And there are a little. They are a little bit quick to jump from. We love Miko Tarta. He knows exactly what we need. <laughs> and then it, oh oh, you just want to play uh, what's his asset right back Partey? Get him out of here. We're gonna get any other manager and anybody anyone in the league who wants to come coach will we'll do a better job than him. It's like very. But in the same vein, it's like Arsenal did work really hard and spend a lot of money to put together a team that can compete for a lot of different titles. So but I don't know. This see, I've been telling you guys, it's a bad idea to play him in the midfield. That this Arsenal team might just not have the edge. That's why I put them forward. You've forth. been saying that, yeah. And for their three matches this season, I haven't been convinced of any of them. Ooh. That they're a team that can chase a title. I, I don't think they've proven that. Big it's, test this weekend, right? And again, like, Mikel, I, I first of all, it was the craziest thing to sub off your captain. You're, you yeah. sub off the, who's arguably your best player on the field, and yeah. you just sub him off. Like I, it was. It so, seems like he's trying to be I, Pep in so many ways, where he's like, "Oh, I can put, I can mix and match my players. I can play anybody wherever. I can and do whatever we'll I want." That, no, that really does it, feel like he's trying. It literally trying to went do. bad when they took him off. It literally went terrible for them. Um, and Arteta has flown off the radar with all of his spending. He spent a lot of money at this point. Like, yeah, it's, he's been there for quite some time. Like. String it together, buddy, because yeah. you've got it all now. You got no excuses, and you might just I mean, be messing it up. They, they also are so they're as capable as any other club. Yeah. I think in world football, as scoring goals and being a top tier offensive team. But I kind of agree with Arsenal faithful in that you're right. A lot of money has been spent, and he has had a lot of time to implement this system. So it is going to be a tougher job to hang on to. The stakes are going to be a lot higher, especially. This Champions League could make or break a lot of different managers who are who are managing these clubs. This is going to easily be Arteta and Eddie Howe's biggest test in their career so far is trying to get their teams out. I would say more Mikel than Eddie. More Mikel yeah, than Eddie. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I, I think that's definitely fair. He, he has a, a much higher bar to hit, and Arsenal were once in those heights, and he's trying to drag them back up. And I think he's done, a, for the most part, a yeah. pretty good job implementing that style. I'd be but, so happy if Arsenal got matched up against Bayern like the old oh, days. That would be perfect. I need, the, I need Arsenal bro, to be in the group of death. Cooked. Against <laughs> Kane, bro. I'm praying Kane, for Arsenal. Kane, Kane eliminates them. Lewin Dallas would have had like four goals. Over two legs, I think it was like 7-1. <laughs> Douglas Costa would have like four sets. <laughs> Um, oh, when he cooked Bellerin, you know oh, that vile grip he does a step God. over. I, I think this this dropped points match sort of mostly goes to the fault of Arteta. Uh, I, I would say he would be the one where I really, I think, reflecting on this, he was the one that kind of put them in that tough spot. Bad idea to give a team even down ten men an extra corner. Like like they were many people were pointing out after the game, like just don't give him a corner in that situation because no good comes from that. But and especially also, a team like Fulham. Also, not to drag Liverpool on this, but. I, I would say Gakpo and Kai are in the same kind of boat right now. Yeah, They are playing in two positions where they're just not. And right. I understand that professional footballers are supposed to, like, yeah, adapt. But, like, at some point you're going to be like, yeah, he's adapting. But, like, he doesn't that's like fair. it. It's, it's not going to bring the best out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I think you Klopp just have to is, know that's a manager. Klopp is more honest about it where Arteta gets hailed as, like, this guy that's going to do the next Klopp's big thing. Klopp's way more of a man manager, too, yeah, than Arteta like, is by all means, I'm know. sure. I'm but sure of that. I, I do get what you're saying, and I want to see Gakpo thriving. So it's like, I, I honestly think it might be beneficial. Louis Diaz got some rest this game, this match, but I want to, I want to see Gakpo play off the left and see what he can offer. I don't, not to like spark a larger conversation. I don't know when this maybe started in the history of football, but it doesn't really behoove a player to be Jeez. sort of a jack of all trades. That doesn't really. I used to think like about guys like James Milner where you could kind of put him really anywhere on the pitch and that's why he's so important to so many teams that rely on a deep bench and rely on a guy to be able to do a lot of different things. But it kind of seems like in recent years, if you are difficult to define as a striker or a defender or a keeper, you don't have a, a distinct specialty or a skill set, it just doesn't yeah. work out really for you. It's The game doesn't really... There's no room for guys like that anymore. It doesn't seem in a way. Right. It's because the level of the game that the game is it's too high. At. Like jack of all trades, master of none. So with the like, you need to have specialists in every position. Why well, constantly the pitch. harp on scoring you know with I mean? your head? Because Havertz outsizes a lot of guys naturally, and that's that's just 
if you're hungry, that, scoring with their heads all about like wanting to score. And Giroud was just was just always hungry. I can't keep bringing him up, but he was always hungrier than people and wanted to yeah. score headers more. And I'm like, if Havertz had like half of that, just like killer instinct, I think he would. A little less like bird noises in the locker. I think the room. last player that was right. a jack of all trades player from an attacking think, perspective was Wayne thinking. Rooney. There we go. No, no, no. But the thing, but the last time a guy was good, at, really good at everything. <laughs> Here we go. From a perspective of scoring goals and also playing in midfield and can play a spray ball. Doing deep, everything. I would say Wayne Rooney was like the last. So you, yeah. big, big I guess player. fair. You have a to be big, big fucking outstanding. If you're a d- guy who's, if you're difficult to define, that means you have to be one of the goats. Like, oh, it's tough to put him in any category because he was so good at You can so play left wing, striker, like, center forward, cam, five eight. side guy. You can play literally. Any position in the yeah, attacking no, third. Guys who probably up. never lost a game of five aside in their lives because oh whoever with their team was on, he was just, oh, he's just the best player. He's just the best. He used to play him a goalkeeper. I'd sure. have to call him back, bro. He can't beat a team with only. Good good thing I, love I love Wayne. Good thing we have Kamavinga. He can uh, play anything. Yeah, he Duardo. Well. Yeah, he does it all. Can't wait to toss him in goal. Duardo Kamavinga. Okay, we need to move to Howler and Baller of the Weekend. And I'm really excited to hear what what the fellow's ballers are. There's a, a player I need to remember to shout out if, if he's nobody because we didn't talk about him when we talked about oh, Liverpool. Easy, but, guys. Don't worry about uh, it. So who wants, you want to go first? We'll do Baller. Let's no, see you uh, go first or you go first. All right, we're going to say it all on three, ready? It should wait, be the same wait, player. No, 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 we're no, all no, going to say it all. No, 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 no. No, we're not saying No, we're not. One, two, three. Nunez, Nunez, Nunez. So, no. Nunez. Darwizzi. Uh, but say, say why. Well, we all know why, but we all can, know why. Right. He, he has proved his value. Come on. No, no. Seriously. Take no, 10, 15 I mean, seconds to talk about why, what clinical, his contribution was. Clinical. He played 13 minutes, won us a match, proved how much he's worth as a player and how deadly he can be as a striker. And that he could be the next big thing. Yeah, the next big 75 thing. million could be. Uh. Don't. I thought it was more than yeah, 75 that's million. A shameless comment for me. I know, I know. 75 I know. million pounds. Shame. The shame is low. I can't spot. even believe what the words could come out. You have two attackers that were worth, well, three now that are worth 70 Anthony million. played well on the weekend, like Darwin says. Uh, okay, so your, your baller of the weekend Darwin was Nunez. Darwin Nunez. Okay, for the two goals against Newcastle. Go. I'll go. Yeah, mine's Destiny Udagi. I know I brought him up earlier on the podcast. First that, name's Destiny. Destiny, and it is his destiny to be a great Premier League left back. I think. Uh, he just, again, looked extremely confident. He's looked confident all season. Really, really quality as, as a left back. And in Andrew's system, you just have to have good wing backs. And I think that's a huge reason why they've been successful so far through three matches. Uh, but he's really impressed me. Only 20 years left, old. Tristan. Huh? You got a month left. Enjoy it while you can. We got a month left, and then it'll be horrible. I'll be miserable that all the collapses. time. Yeah, injury, injury. Injuries will start to pile up. <laughs> uh, no, but for now, Destiny, was uh, he's been phenomenal. I love watching him. Welcome addition. I'm going to go Bruno. Bruno, Bruno, oh, that's Bruno. That's such a whack oh pick. Oh, my wow. gosh. What do you that's mean? That's such a whack pick. Oh. How's that a whack pick? You beat a team with no, no, an no, no, extra no. guy. It's not about the team. It's and about scored Bruno. scored a penalty. But it was... We were instrumental in the... He was, they got an assist for Casemiro's goal and he scored the penalty. Get, well, don't shit let, all right, let him rep his boy. He had a goal and an assist at the weekend and, and he hasn't comeback. done anything in a season and a in half. In a major comeback. You against a team down a man? Why is a bad pick? You, you Manchester United has yet to beat a team without being up a man. You beat Wolves when you were up a man. You lost the next week, and you beat Nottingham okay, Forest I'm go up a man. Look, I'm he, still wait, wait. Am I, listen, I'm still going. He didn't. He didn't freak out when you picked Nunez. Don't yuck someone else's. Oh, yuck. he said he's you not know, worth the money. Overrated. He's all. He saw, He said it all. Before. I also think that's sort of a shout for for Baller of the Weekend. But but hey, if, yeah. But it, check yourself, bro. You I, what? I think what? he put in a shift. He got an assist and a goal. What the fuck? In a there's comeback just, against Penanda. There's just, a lot, guys, there's just Penandes. a lot more guys that, that I think had better. I just want to shout my no, team out. I, dude, the, the best part about Baller of the Weekend is you can pick whatever baller you want as Baller of the Weekend. Even Jay. not ballers. Yeah. And Jay, I think this always goes. Did, with this. He got a goal and assist. You Great. were actually out of your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> and. And a pen. Up the man. You doggy. Up the man. Game. He, he was he probably on game. He was probably unmarked for 30 oh minutes as a free floating player because we got no all, one to mark him. You're going to drag my guy, Destiny, into this. He's had three. Yeah, get a, get a goal. Three games by far for a left back. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm just going based upon what no, he did. No, we get it, dude. You're desperate. Bruno is completely falling off the face of the earth. He got a he shot. He got a goal and an assist. You're trying to give him some confidence. He got a goal and an assist. Everything he said after we get it is not actually out. By the way, we get it. He's overrated. This always goes without saying, but if you want to pick a La Liga, Guy or a Madrid guy, you're welcome to do so. I mean, no, I'll stick prem. Uh, my baller is Musa Diaby. Musa Diaby, good pick. I think he's nice. had a. I think he's had a great transition to the prem, and I mean, he's Xavi Alonso's boys, former uh, Real Madrid player. Yeah, so, uh, I think. I think I like Musa. I think I. I was very skeptical on the move, not skeptical as in like. Uh. 
it was more like I think he could go higher because like he's he was phenomenal in the Bundesliga, but player him to Bundesliga is obviously a big yeah. switch. But I, as of right now, he's in great form. That's and a he's great starting, shout. So. He always looks deadly. I mean, he's it's one so of those, fast. He's yeah. the fastest man I've ever seen. Plus, <laughs> you're right. Like you make a good point. Could he have done a bigger club move? Maybe, but sometimes I think those guys are rewarded. If you are like, I'll go to a mid table club. That's a good project. They play a good system. It's more pure football that way a little bit, and a lot of times they're rewarded for it's that. Also, like stepping stones. You don't want to take too big of a true. Yeah. Like you don't want you want to. He's get still that. young. I mean, yeah. he came from PSG, which is yeah, wild. You don't want to do it, Sancho. Did it, and let me just say too, it would or be Tiago. or Tiago. It would be an absolute shame not to bring up Allison as one of the ballers of the weekend because we didn't bring him up when we talked about Liverpool, and he put in a phenomenal, phenomenal yeah, shift. Huge did. reason why they they got that result. He was so. incredible. I mainly that wanted to just shout him against Almiron, and he just made a ton of saves. I mean, Miggy Almiron, what are you talking but, about? But, what what save was that? The volley that he it was hit like off his po- chest and a volley the, off the crossbar into the crossbar. If that hit somebody like in the head, it would it kill be, them It could be save of the season. Oh, yes, yes. It was bad. crazy. I thought no, you were talking he... about when he like cut in and hit the post. I was like, I oh, was like no, Allison no, no, touched no. that? It was early. Uh, Bruno, but, Bruno, Bruno. Yeah. John Champion said Miggy, and I'm like, dude, he's he's so sick. He <laughs> really like, doesn't I'll, put Miggy. a foot wrong up there. I was talking about, Miggy, I'll, I'll, I'll always be team Bruno, man. I'll always be team Bruno. Bruno. Dude, he's the best offensive midfielder in the prime. Okay, we have our ball. Stats, stats. You look at the stats, man. He didn't do anything last season. Bruno Fernandez. He has some, and he has, all he has of his goals most, came from penalties. He has when the he most first chances time. created. He has the most forward That's, passes. Trent creates more chances yeah, than Bruno. That. And he's that, a is, oh, oh, that is such a lie. You are literally... Connor, Connor, you could have gone so many avenues. Is, there's, there's just better midfielders. Oh, you want just, Trent? <laughs> there are well, better midfielders. Bruno Fernandez is one of the best midfielders in the Prem the last four years. But the, be- the best forward-thinking <laughs> midfielder, his hand is just broken. Yeah, why well, you slap the table? <laughs> you guys are. You guys are. I, hey, we just got done talking I'm about just, how many good midfielders in the I'm Prem just, right, there so are. Odegaard's so. better than Bruno. So but, let's uh, let's move on to... Could argue. Okay, so we got our ballers on our howler of the weekend. Mine is Andre Onana for whatever the fuck he tried to do before that first goal <laughs> where he, like, fell and tried to, like... I think he got faked out really bad. I think, I think he, got, he got faked out. He got faked out. <laughs> oh, he didn't get out. He, he did not get, get faked out. out. The guy was dribbling in a straight line. I think he just tried to do some wild shit. He should have like closed the player down. Uh, That's like goalkeeping 101. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I go Onana for yeah, some sauce keeping. There you yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Tindall, Newcastle man- assistant manager. Oh yeah, for the uh, what, for uh, for a shit for a shit um, yeah. and then he just gets it back in his also, face. So he needs to plant his ass in a chair. Yeah, there's also that whole like debate with like the two managers in the oh in the he technical shakes the hand first. Well, he's also in the technical area with Eddie. They Howell. both pretty just sh- stand up the whole time. That's sure, not allowed. Pretty sure it's only one allowed okay. in the technical area. Of all a- the coaches who have ridiculous sideline antics, maybe you can sit no, this one but out. You, I'll back you up need, that point. You're only allowed you have to co- have one. You have Mr. Quintessential Jackass on the sideline. No, no, he ran on the field and started hugging Allison. That's how we match up for Tyndall because he's just standing. He is annoying around, shit like, though. Maniac, yeah, yeah. I, yes. I totally I rate so that. I, and, and like the sh- like the shit housery during the match when they he looks at Klopp and yeah, definitely like, have a seat. It's just it's just like that's how you know that there's ego within that Newcastle management side, or maybe not Eddie or whatever. But you can see that it's kind of getting to him that he's getting media press and he's getting involved with Klopp comments his head. and like then he's doing it. He there. went on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so I thought that was a, a pretty big howler. Yeah. Uh, I'll go Botman for mine. Tough, yeah, tough. That was very, like, it's very, it's the old very, back heel it's assist. A, like, it's like an actual howler. Like, it was almost just yeah. as bad as Van Dyke. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> no one laughed. <laughs> <It's good>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. Uh. Oh, oh yeah, an Vinic hour and five never minutes. Never got a red card. An Vinic hour and never five minutes. Finish and Van Dyke. It's like levels, bro. Is when All it right. goes off the rails. Yeah, right. Van Dyke. Okay, okay. Bo- Botman. I like that pick. That's a good one. Yeah, I was. I was. There's a lot that I could pick from that Newcastle match. Oh, I don't want to say the officiating again, but I was pretty fed up with the officiating at the Liverpool match because Liverpool got carded two yellow cards for throwing balls away, and I find it hard to believe that throughout that 90 minutes, not a single Newcastle ball player kicked or threw a ball away and Jolton had about seven fouls in the first 45 minutes and did not get cautioned. Dar- so, you, Darwin's was bullshit. I was you just guys like, dude, think, what is going yeah, on he here? Passed the ball. Like I was like, so I don't know. Regardless I hate of to your go, guys, Liverpool feelings. Do you think that was, should have been a red card on Van Dyke? You think that was yeah, harsh? A goal scoring yes. opportunity. I think, I, I think, think it, it was. was, I think it was, I don't know if how much debate it's, there was it's on like that, but almost one of the soft, I think it's a softer red that you could see. Yeah. Softer um, side of the red for sure. But yeah, I did see an interesting 
take from an official that said that if that had happened in the inside the box and Newcastle awarded a penalty, he might not have seen red. He would have seen yellow, but he would have seen, because he, it was he would have seen yellow for sure. Yeah, but because There's it no was way. outside of the box and they didn't get offered another chance to score that it was that's why it was red like for a penalty but, it's hard to get a red for a penalty because there's a chance for them to score but yeah, if it's, it's like, outside it's, the box there's no chance for you of it's knowing like, if right, yeah score. it's like doubling like you're double trouble and he's but, on goal but there, yeah I, that, that's just where should have let him have a go I, I would have been like fucking I, I let Allison just yeah, say take, it. I take the Ser- no seriously <laughs> I, I'm so much more confident defending with that keeper behind me I'm like yeah, well, fucking let me get burned I'll get burned all game but we'll still win I know I would have stumbled yeah, well, I don't would have been like on doing like push ups or something. I, I really hate to go officials twice in a row, but I think there's with the rules that they've set, there's no clear way. Because if you actually enforce those rules, like even Trent pushing the ball away or whatever he did to get his initial yellow, like everyone was like, oh, he should have got sent off. Yeah, because I think he should have gotten a yellow for maybe the Gordon foul being a transitional foul. But there was a couple transitional fouls that didn't get carded. But it's more like the fact of if you push a ball away, if you delay a throw in. Like you're going to end up if you actually enforce that for a full 90 minutes or 110 minutes, whatever it is, you're going to have like 15 players on yellow cards at the end of that match. But well, people yeah. are gonna, there's going to be so many suspensions now, like mid season. Yeah. You're going to be like, where is this guy in the lineup? He's always oh, suspended for his five yellow cards for throwing yeah, the ball throwing or right. like poking so the ball. That's where that's where I was for just, going like this. Yeah, that's where <laughs> that's where I was just really frustrated yeah. with like straight red. I, I don't. Like Newcastle definitely pushed the ball away at one point, and they never got a yellow, a yellow card. And like we saw yellows very early on in the match. And Jolton is now probably enemy number one for me because he's just a shit house. Well, the, it also it like kind of ruins the integrity of the game because like obviously Trent got that yellow card for throwing the ball away, but then there's an actual fall the next play, and like obviously we like I'm a, I'm not really a fan of like hearing what the like referees say, but mm. like if like the referee goes up to Trent and is like. You can obviously be like, yo, like, I'm not going to give you a car, but cut it out. But it's like, all right, well, you fucked up your job in the first place. And mm-hmm. now you actually had to do your job and you're yeah. going to tell them, ah, like, you're good. Just because it's gameplay, you're yeah. going to let it go. But, like, imagine him giving two yellow cards in the first five minutes. Oh, I didn't like it. Yeah. Even Trent, I, I hate to be, oh, I'm the Liverpool fan. like, But if in, in certain instances, it felt like the rest were against us. Trent, it was like... He was down in the corner. He took the ball to waste the time in the in the waning minutes of the match. And he's going to the crowd and he's hyping them up. And obviously at Newcastle, they're way up in the clouds, like, rafters. Yeah. So the refs are on not, them this it's year. It's not like you have the corner section to like hype up your fans. And the assistant referee was literally like none of that. I don't he, know like, where they're getting this, this confidence. And like this, told Trent to cut the shit. And I was the, like, Dude, what the. It was the clip I sent of Madison where he goes to the corner flag and he like pretends to take a corner where it's not where it should be in the crowd. So, yeah, and even yeah. doing that, the ref is like, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, like, dude, and people came and bought a lot of, spent a lot of money to come here and they, they have like a fun experience now, like a one-on-one experience they had with a player like, on the pitch. And you're sitting there being like, come on now, let's go TikTok. Please. Like, first of all, you don't have the power to explain any of these. So you should be <laughs> shit scared of being more strict about the rules than you were in previous seasons. But I do not have a good feeling about this season, ref wise. Like yeah. we're having already way too much bullshit with all this, and yeah. it's only three day, three games in. So, but that's it. That's the Howlers podcast. One seven up. seven, right, guys? We're seven, rapidly eight, eight. One seven, seven eight. eight. One seven eight. We're, we're past three quarters to two hundred. That's big, and we cannot wait for one seven nine. Bye bye.